The first king of Arya leads an attack on the dragon, tracing it back to its lair but all his soldiers are killed by the dragon's flames. The king thrusts his sword into the ground and kneels for forgiveness. Centuries later, in a harsh and barren land, Elodie and her little sister Floria are gathering firewood. They notice a carriage approaching and return to the castle, where they find a red priestess visiting their father and stepmother, Lord and Lady Bayford. The priestess delivers a letter from the Queen of Aurea, proposing a marriage between Elodie and the Prince of Aurea. Initially hesitant, Lord Bayford reminds her of their duty to their starving people. Eventually she agrees. Upon their arrival, the family is impressed by the grandeur of the castle, with all its wealth. The Chamberlain greets them, and Elodie is escorted to her room. From her balcony, she marvels at the view and notices another girl on a neighboring balcony. The next day, Elodie meets the Queen and Prince Henry, who takes her for a walk to get to know each other. Elodie discovers they share a desire to travel, and begins to believe she made the right choice by agreeing to marry the charming prince. In the castle, Lady Bayford notices her husband appears troubled after a meeting with the Queen, but he insists everything is fine. She approaches the Queen in an attempt to strengthen their family bond, but the Queen rebuffs her, referring to the marriage as merely a transaction and even misnaming Elodie. Lady Bayford tries to warn Elodie to end the engagement as something seems amiss with the royal family, but Elodie ignores her advice. The next day, the wedding proceeds as planned. After the ceremony, the couple heads to the mountains in a carriage for an ancient ritual, where a group of people wearing gold masks awaits. The queen, dressed as a priestess, gives Elodie a gold coin and begins recounting the history of Aurea. She explains that when their ancestors arrived on the island, they were met with a vicious dragon that attacked the village. The king led his soldiers to avenge his people but failed, so he sacrificed his three daughters to the dragon for peace. The queen cuts both Henry's and Elodie's palms, and they join hands. She announces that Elodie now shares royal blood and asks her to toss the coin into the chasm to complete the ceremony. Henry then lifts Elodie and throws her down as she screams. Fortunately, the branches below lessened the impact of her fall. After waking up, she calls for help, unaware that she has already awakened the dragon. She tries to climb up but fails, only to discover scattered jewelry, and then realizes that she is the sacrifice. Elodie sees a light coming from a cave and follows it, where she finds a bird on fire. She rushes to put out the fire before an entire flock of flaming birds emerges from the cave. At that moment, the dragon appears, and Elodie quickly hides. The dragon asks for her name and explains that she is here to claim what's promised and owed, as Elodie must pay due to her royal blood. Elodie realizes that it was Henry's blood, mixed with hers, that the dragon was smelling. The dragon breathes out fire as Elodie runs away in fear. During her escape, she stumbles upon a body and is horrified to recognize the girl from yesterday. As she hears the dragon approaching, she tries to hide in a narrow tunnel, but her dress gets caught. She struggles free just as the dragon's flames nearly reach her, but her leg gets burned. She pulls out the dagger from her corset and cuts strips from her dress to bandage her wound. Then, she lights her incense burner to navigate in the dark. She crawls forward but slips and falls down a tunnel, where she discovers a glowing cave nearby. She heads towards it but almost falls off a cliff. Gathering her courage, she jumps across. However, she fails and begins to slide down. Fortunately, her dress gets caught between the stones, and she manages to climb back up using the dagger. Elodie discovers that the glowing objects on the wall are actually glow worms. She gathers some in her sleeve to use as a light source before finding a puddle of water and attempting to drink from it, only to find it disgusting. However, she notices melting icicles overhead and tilts her head back to catch the dripping water. Suddenly, the dragon bursts through the ice, causing Elodie to run away until she finds an alcove where the dragon can't reach. Inside, Elodie finds more pieces of clothing and a wall with names of the past sacrifices. She wonders if any of them made it out alive. Elodie checks her wound before falling asleep. In her dreams, she sees the girls who were once trapped here like her. A girl named Victoria tells her it's all a lie. Startled awake, Elodie discovers that glow worms are all over her wound. After picking them off, she is surprised to find her burn healed. Realizing that the worms have healing abilities, she places them on her injured arm, and the wound quickly heals. Elodie studies the map drawn on the wall and believes the sun symbol marks an exit. She writes her name on the wall before continuing her journey. Following the information on the map, she locates the crystal area, which leads to an opening high above. Discovering a crown with the letter V engraved on it, she is relieved to know that Victoria had made it out. However, after finally managing to climb up, she is filled with despair to find that the exit is just a high opening on the side of the mountain. Just then, she notices several people approaching the mountains and immediately shouts for help, but her voice only attracts the dragon. 
Elodie backs away, screaming in fear when she finds a body and realizes that Victoria never escaped. Just as the dragon is about to breathe fire to finish Elodie, she hears her father call out her name, diverting the dragon's attention. Elodie goes back down and follows the voices until she discovers the remains of three baby dragons, realizing that the queen had lied. The truth is that the first king had attacked the dragon's lair unprovoked and killed the dragon's three daughters, leaving her as the last of her kind. Death wasn't enough for the evil king, so the dragon decided to make him experience the same pain. Three were taken, so the loyal has to give three. Meanwhile, Lord Bayford has hired a local guide to lead him and his knights to the dragon's lair to rescue Elodie. They call out to her, and when she finds them, so does the dragon. The dragon grabs a knight and throws him down from the height, causing him to fall to his death, and she steps on another one and crushes him to death. Lord Bayford draws his sword and bravely confronts the dragon, but is overpowered and thrown to the ground. The dragon demands that he call out for Elodie to reveal herself. Instead, he apologizes for sacrificing the one thing he loves most for the supposed good of his people, and orders her not to come out while Elodie hears everything from behind a rock. Furious, the dragon digs her talons into Lord Bayford. Just as the dragon is about to discover Elodie, the local guide, who is hiding, slips and makes a noise, diverting the dragon's attention away from her. This gives Elodie time to check on her father, who tells her to use the ropes to escape and informs her that her stepmother and sister are waiting for her at the port. Elodie kisses him goodbye before leaving. Elodie climbs the rope and escapes the lair, then she rides one of the horses and runs away as the dragon chases after her. She quickly hides under a rock while the dragon shows her anger and burns the area surrounding the mountain as she fails to find her. The queen sees the fire and realizes that Elodie has escaped, so she goes to the ship with soldiers to seize Floria as a replacement. Lady Bayford tries to stop them, but gets stabbed. After the dragon leaves, Elodie comes out and walks down the mountains, where she bumps into Lady Bayford, who informs her that Floria has been taken to be sacrificed. Elodie decides to return to rescue her. Henry refuses to mix his blood with Floria, as she is just a child. The queen tells him he is weak before cutting her hand to mix her blood with Floria's, and orders the guards to throw her down the chasm. Elodie arrives, but it's too late. The dragon takes Floria and leaves her alive, as bait for Elodie. Elodie descends into the dragon's lair, gathering some glowworms along the way and attempting to disguise her scent with the disgusting water. She then cuts her hair and uses it with some armor pieces to set up a booby trap before grabbing her father's sword. Shortly after, the trap is triggered and distracts the dragon away, allowing Elodie to rescue Floria, who is injured and unable to walk. Elodie supports her as they try to escape, but they don't get far before the dragon catches up to them. Elodie tells Floria to hide while she confronts the dragon, holding her at sword point and trying to convince her that they've both been deceived by the royals. However, the dragon refuses to believe her. As the dragon breathes fire on her, Elodie manages to stab her in the mouth, but the attack doesn't cause much harm. Fortunately, Elodie falls into the water. As she climbs out, she screams in pain. Floria throws the sword to her, but as Elodie runs towards it, the dragon pins her to the ground and digs her claw into her. Elodie then takes out her dagger and stabs the dragon in the eye, causing her to throw Elodie away. Elodie picks up the sword and attacks the dragon, managing to thrust it into her. The furious dragon picks Elodie up as she screams that she is not of royal blood, but the dragon still doesn't believe her as she can smell her royal blood. Elodie then stabs the dragon's hand and gets thrown away again. Elodie becomes very weak and unsure of what to do when she notices a shell-shaped rock. As the dragon approaches, her wings stir the air, creating a backdraft. This gives her an idea. She stands in front of the rock to provoke the dragon. When the dragon breathes fire, she dodges, causing the flames to turn back and burn the dragon herself. The dragon lies weakly on the ground. As Elodie reveals she is not of royal blood, she shows the scar on her palm, proof that her blood was mingled with the royals to trick the dragon into thinking she was killing royal heirs when they were actually innocent girls. The dragon then asks Elodie to end her suffering. Instead, Elodie uses glow worms to heal the dragon's wounds. After a while, Elodie arrives at the castle just in time to disrupt Henry's wedding to the third sacrifice. She advises the new bride and her family to escape and offers others a chance to flee. Some quickly run away in fear. Then, the dragon arrives and breathes fire in her wrath, setting the castle ablaze and killing all the royals as Elodie leaves. Afterwards, Elodie, Floria, and Lady Bayford set sail for home with a bounty of supplies to sustain their people, and the dragon flies home with them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our channel for more videos.